Hey, and welcome to the second of our virtual field trips um, on Mount Graham, or the Panaleo Mountains in Eastern Arizona. Um, where I'm at now is uh, a, a picnic area called Noon Creek. And what's special about Noon Creek is that it is in a transition zone from woodlands into the desert. A couple of other things that are really cool about this spot is that it's also a boundary line between a wildfire um, and where it stopped. And then the last thing that I, I'm going to talk about today is the fact that there is a riparian area just down there. You can't see it very well, but it is. It's down there. And we're going to walk through and look at a few things. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about today is a few trees, okay, that are in this woodland zone. So woodland trees are, by definition, shorter. Um, because they're in a transition zone, they are uh, not going get, to get as much water. And as a result, they tend to be shorter and smaller than like a large forest tree. And so before, behind me here, you've got a very interesting tree called the Arizona white oak. And you can see some of the twisty whiteness of its bark, okay, um, which is pretty cool. Now, in a moment, I'm going to show you another tree called a, um, an emery oak. And they are very difficult to tell the difference between. And I'll show you all the cool ways to tell you the difference but you can see the emery oak above me here beautiful tree absolutely oh this is the arizona white oak sorry um so uh, I'll, I'll show you the differences here in a little bit uh another tree that i want to show you oh here's the emery oak right here i mean turn around here's an emery oak smaller grab one of the leaves here you can see the leaves actually the Arizona white oak looks very similar to this and if it was closer to the ground I'd, I'd grant one well I'll hold on to this and show you the difference uh, if you look at the bark on this tree it, it's not quite it's darker it's a darker bark um, and uh, compared to the Arizona white oak which again is right here it's a li little bit lighter bark okay all right, so emery oak and Arizona white oak. Now, there's another tree right here. It's more of a shrub, actually, um, right here. And I want to show you this. This is the point leaf manzanita. And if you look back in there at the bark, it's beautiful bark. It's a kind of a maroon bark uh, on this. And I'll show you a couple others um, later on. But it's got an, a, a beautiful maroon point leaf manzanita. There's also a Pringle manzanita, um, which when their berries are on there and they're kind of sweet, the fleshy outside is very sweet, high in carbohydrates, uh, is one of the chief components, or about 80% of what bears eat when the berries are in, in, um, uh, in season. Uh, so that's the manzanita. Uh, behind me is one more tree and you might know this one uh this is the alligator juniper tree um, you can see this one's actually a rather tall juniper um, they don't have standard leaves they have what are known as scales and if i can grab one here oh it's too high for me Let's see if i oh here's another one this one actually is a little better um, if you look at its bark it looks like the back of an alligator Okay, alligator juniper, and I can grab some of the, again, these are not leaves, these are scales. It's an evergreen, so it's in the uh, conifer family. Uh, the conifer family, if I can get closer, uh, are evergreens typically, and um, uh, they don't, uh, they don't lose their leaves in the winter like um, our deciduous trees, like the Arizona white oak and the emery oak typically do, okay? So I wanted to show you, where's an Arizona white oak? 
I wanted to show you the leaves. Of the emery and the Arizona white oak. Here's emery oak right behind me. There it is. Now let's let's compare the leaves because it's the best way to look at the two different types. So so I am going to pause this. Okay, so we've got two leaves here. Right here we've got the Arizona white oak. And over here we've got the emery oak and if you look at them and compare them there's a couple of things that you'll notice first the arizona white oak the leaf is not quite as shiny there's a little bit of a sheen or shine to the emery oak on the left and the arizona white oak is not so much typically although you can't tell with these two leaves the emery oak leaves are also typically a little bit smaller than the arizona white oak so these are usually bigger, but in this case, I think I just grabbed the wrong set of leaves. They're usually a little bit bigger. Um, and so that can help. And of course, then you can look at the bark as well to uh, compare the two, and then uh, you can tell the difference. So now that you know the difference, let's see if we can go over here. We're gonna look at this tree right here. Look at the bark. Look at the leaves. Can you tell me what kind of tree this one is? I'll pause for a second and let you write it down. Write it down somewhere real quick, just so you have a guess. So if you guessed Arizona white oak, you would be correct. That white bark should be a good sign for you. Here's one more Arizona white oak. You can see the nice whiteness of the bark here. Turn around, let you see it behind me. There's that Arizona white bark right there. Let's look at those leaves, grab a leaf here. Again, not very much of a shine to the leaves. So again, so that's that Arizona white oak. Um, let's go over here. Look at this one. See if you can tell me what this one is. Okay. Get close to the leaves. Which one do you think that one is? Just by looking at the leaves. I think those leaves are a little bit shinier than the ones we just looked at. So I would say this is an emery oak. And if we look at the bark, it's a darker bark. And the leaves are a little bit bigger than what I would expect an emery oak to have. And so, again, emery oak. Okay. All right. So we're going, we're, we're started at this top of um, the Noon Creek campground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up here on the side and then I'm going to show you a background. So I told you this place has got a, some history with wildfire and back in 2016 there was a large wildfire called the uh, Fry Mesa fire. Burned I think it was close to 80,000, 70,000 acres. Um, big wildfire and uh, it stopped right where I'm standing right now. So I'm going to show you You can see that there's not any trees. There's some shrubs that have grown in since 2016. But mostly it's just shrubs until you get to about where I'm standing and then you can see there are trees around here. So we're right at the border of where that wildfire stopped. And um, if I get up a little bit higher, you can see down in a little bit of the riparian areas. Uh, it didn't quite burn all the trees, but you can see some tree skeletons down in there. There's a tree skeleton right there where wildfire burned it. Now, we are in a wildfire adapted ecosystem 
up here in the woodlands. Down in the valley, that way, um, the desert is not fire adapted. But up here, this place needs wildfire to come and burn out some of what we call the fuel, the, the dead material that falls down and burn it out and clean it out it needs to happen. But over the last uh, 150 years, um, since the settling of the West by Europeans, um, we have stopped wildfires from occurring because we want to save lives, structures, and homes. And unfortunately, that's had a negative side effect in that that means that a lot of dead material is building up on these mountainsides. Um, and they're not getting cleaned out by uh, small localized fires like they should. And so when we do have a fire, it tends to be big and catastrophic. And that is a problem. And so um, uh, whenever they come, it usually burns out everything, uh, leaving the soils exposed. And so when it rains, uh, when the rains come, um, it causes mud flows avalanches, all sorts of things that are really, really, really bad. Uh, and so that's the downside of fire control practices of the last 100 and 150 years here in the West. Uh, we are trying our best to change that. We do control burns. We, uh, and when burns do happen, we bring out tons of seed and we seed these hills behind me here have all been seeded with grass seeds. Grasses are great because they have fibrous roots. They hold that soil in place. And so the wildfires, uh, you know, after they come, if we can get that grass back in there as fast as possible, we're not gonna have all of those avalanches and mud flows from rain. That soil's gonna stay in place, um, which is what we want, okay? All right, so that's wildfires. Um, so, a minute ago, I told you about a different type of plant, and I want to see if you know, remember what this plant is. Now, you didn't get to see the flowers. Here's the flowers on this thing. Really pretty little flowers. They'll turn into those fruits that I told you bears love. Do you remember the name of this plant? You can see that maroon bark on there. Maroon bark. Do you remember? Uh, it means little apple in Spanish. So we call that the manzanita, manzanita tree, uh, bush sh or shrub, sorry. Um, so manzanita. Now, again, there are two types here at a new creek. There's the point leaf manzanita, which is more akin to higher up in elevation and the Pringle manzanita, which is more likely to be present around here. Now, how do you tell the difference between the two? Well, the point leaf manzanita has a pointier leaf. Um, the Pringle manzanita tends to have a more orangey color of a bark. And so that way you can tell the difference between the two. Um, if you don't have them side by side, it gets really difficult. Um, so ooh, here's a Pringle manzanita. I can tell because it's got that orangier, orangier bark here. There you go orangier bark still very dark maroon but orangier has orangier is that a word i don't know um anyway so oop here's here's another one you should know let's see if you know this one can you tell what what we're what's this one it's got that alligator bark so we know that that's the alligator juniper. Ooh, we've got a point leaf. Nope, nope, Pringle manzanita right here. There's lots of manzanita where I'm standing too, right behind me here. Beautiful, beautiful bark. Um, I would love to have some kind of furniture made out of manzanita, but I wouldn't want to harm one either. So not going to do that. Okay, so here's another tree you should know now. The white bark should give it away. Let's look at the leaves. Ooh, this one's a little tricky. Because that's a shine. But the leaves are also bigger than they should be. Um, so I'm going to go with white, Arizona white oak on this one. It's got that white bark. It seems to be pretty typical. 
The only thing that's a little bit tricky because it kind of looks like they have shiny leaves. And so, oop, here's an emery oak. You can see, oh, no, no, that's an Arizona white oak too. It didn't have the white, white bark. And so sometimes it's a little hard to tell. Um, here's an Arizona white oak that's nice and big. And it has that characteristic white bark right there behind me. You see that white bark? Yeah. So, anyway. Okay, what kind of manzanita is this? If you look at that bark, it's more orangey in color. So this is our Pringle manzanita. So who remembers what this is? If you can remember what that is, that's the prickly pear cactus. We talked about that in our first trip to the desert, right? And you remember that that water savings technique that prickly pear has. Some of the pads are often inverted from each other. This one's got a rock laying on top of it, but we've got this pad right here that is uh, kind of perpendicular to these pads over here. And again, that's a water savings control technique. Ooh, look at this. See how shiny those leaves are? So that would be our emery oak. Now, let's go over here and look at these taller grass looking plants. Um, now you've got two of them side by side here, two. The one on the this what side right here, that is called bear grass. Um, you can see that it doesn't have any spines on it. It's got this frilly stuff. That's, that's bear grass. And then on the left here, we've got something called sotol. And sotol has uh, those little, little, little uh, uh, thorns on the side. It's a modified stem, but that's sotol. And then the other one is, this one is bear grass. Okay, so I'll quiz you on that. We've got another one right here we learned last time. This is common name, century plant, right there. It's a really tiny one, century plant. They really don't live to be a century old, but they, they definitely are an important part of our ecosystem here. We've got a small Arizona white oak right there. We got another now let's look at this one because we're going to see a different one here. Again, this is our, look at those. It's got those scaly leaves. This is our alligator juniper. Now let's look at a different juniper right over here. Okay, there's another alligator juniper right there. That, that checkerboard almost back. There's a nice mesquite. Look at all those flowers on that mesquite. Oh, sorry, not mesquite, um, manzanita. Ha, <laughs> jumped too soon. All right, so this is another juniper. Another juniper right there. You can see the scales on its leaves, but look at its bark. Does not have that alligator back. So we know right away that this is not an alligator juniper. This is probably now there's two possibilities down in this part of Arizona. Um, there are Arizona junipers, and there's also something called one seed juniper, Juniperus monosperma. Um, and one, my guess is that uh, because of this type of bark, that this is a one seed juniper. Okay. What's that? That is our century plant. Here is a much bigger century plant. It's much older, in very good health. What's this? Now this is that bear grass that we mentioned. Now we've also got some little ferns here there and I've forgotten the name of those ferns I'll uh, 
figure it out and tell you in the comments. So right here we have a beautiful comparison between our Arizona white oak over here, right there, and our emery oak over here. See the difference in the color of bark? And now let's look at the leaves. So you see that shiny leaf? That's the characteristic of an emery oak very characteristic now let's move back over to arizona white oak and look at how dull that is in comparison again arizona white oak has much duller leaves even though they look very very similar so we are in a riparian zone beautiful absolutely gorgeous little stream right here mountain stream love the sound of water coming down a mountain stream um and so what's different? What is a riparian zone? A riparian zone is a place where there's water, okay? And so that means that the plant life is gonna be a little different, all right? And so what's the biggest of the plant life that is different? And that is these cottonwood trees. So in the past, around this part of Arizona, cottonwood trees were dominant along riparian trees. You can see this one behind me here. You can see its bark. Cottonwoods are uh, related to aspens. Um, they are a hardwood, uh, although their wood isn't actually all that hard. They're classified as a hardwood because they're a flowering plant, um, but they, they really don't have that hard of wood. Um, uh, that bark you can see behind me there is very characteristic of cottonwoods. Um, why are they called cottonwoods? It's because their inflorescence give off a cottony uh, wind dispersal of seeds. That's the right word, thank you. Um, and, uh, and it looks very cottony. Um, and so this is, this is the cottonwood that typically lines our, our riparian areas. Now, we are actually in a situation in a lot of our riparian areas where cottonwoods have, were removed um, because they were concerned that they were using too much water. So they were removed. Unfortunately, another plant, another tree has come into many of our areas called tamarisk, okay? And I'll, I'll go get you a, a little video of tamarisk later, but up and down many of our uh, waterways is lined with this tree that's a foreign tree. We call it an invasive, uh, non-native tree called tamarisk, sometimes also known as salt cedar. And salt cedar has just taken over much of our Arizona waterways, uh, even all of m many of the air waterways here in the Western United States. Uh, there's, there's about three different species of tamarisk, but they all kind of look the same. They have very tiny leaves, um, and they are very thick and they don't like other things living around them and uh, cows and other larger mammals trying to walk through them is very difficult for them. Um, now, one of the reasons why we don't just get rid of all of them is because tamarisk as well as cottonwoods are a great plant for our Southwest willow flycatcher uh, and if the S Southwest Willow Flycatcher is a bird that is on the endangered species list. Um, and so we don't just go in and burn all the tamarisk or get rid of it. Uh, first of all, because it's very difficult, but second of all, because of that Southwest Willow Flycatcher. Um, and so we have to be careful around our waterways. So, oh, I love this place. Look at that water. Gorgeous. Absolutely wonderful. So, anyway. So, that winds up our little discussion on the riparian area. There are other plants around here that are also very important, but um, that cottonwood is the most important one. All right, so what do you need to get out of this uh, virtual field trip to Noon Creek? Again, what are the ecosystems? Number question, first question that I want you to ask, what were the ecosystems that I discussed here today? So if you don't remember that, go back and review some of the video footage and see if you can talk about the ecosystems. What do those ecosystems mean? Okay. 
Um, I'll give you a hint. One of them was a riparian area. We just went over that. Um, let a car go by. Uh, always funny to watch someone recording themselves. Number two, um, I want you to uh, talk about some of the different plant species. At least five of the different plants that I talked about today, I want you to record, uh, uh, write, write them down in your notes um, that you're gonna turn in. And let me know what was different about them. How would you identify them, okay? And lastly, anything that you saw that was cool to you, uh, I want you to submit something that was interesting about this part of our virtual field trip up Mount Graham. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.